All right, so I'm gonna walk through a few examples of calculating the area between two curves, and this is another calculus concept. Uh, so basically we're gonna start and do, we're gonna do two examples. We're gonna deal with one in terms of y functions and then one in terms of x functions. Uh, so essentially they're just slightly calculated a little bit differently, you just need to pay attention to your bounds, but you'll see what I mean as we go. So I guess let's deal with the most common case you'd probably see uh, right off the bat in calculus. So the first case scenario you would see is when you're dealing with uh, terms, of, uh, your functions in terms of y, and then you're dealing with x bounds. So let's first define what's important here. So when we're dealing with two curves and we're trying to find the area between, well to integrate all we're doing, so I, what I'm going to do is make blue the top color here. When blue is the top curve here, when we integrate, what we're doing is we're basically taking everything between those bounds and calculating the area down to the x-axis. So it covers everything within there. And then same thing, if we look at the bottom curve, we're basically considering this curve that's crossing below here. And then when we calculate the area below the bounds there, we're basically calculating everything within this area there. So now that we want to calculate this, what we're going to do is we're basically going to set up an integration of area where our bounds of our integration are x. So in this case, they intersect at 1, 1. So we know our first bound is 1, where x is 1. And then it gave us an outside limit of x equals to 8. So what we're going to do is that's going to be our top limit, which is our b point. Our a point is 1. And then we're going to do y top, which is our top function, minus our bottom function, which will give us the area between. So simply put, then we rewrite our integration, eight to one, we put our top function, which is the cube root of x, minus one over x, which is the bottom function. Make sure you put your dx there because we're integrating. Then basically you set up your next step where you integrate both functions. Simply put, you can just double check these. Uh, they're pretty easy to do for the most part, um, but these would be your integrations. So most commonly known we have our one over x is our ln x. And then of course, when we integrate, we put our bounds at the end, uh, meaning we're gonna plug those in for both of those functions. Then once we have that, essentially we're gonna plug in our eight as our first one in here. Then we're gonna subtract off when we sub in our one, and we know we only have a three and a four minus an ln one, which is zero. And then basically you can just simplify from there, and this will be your answer for that curve. So essentially to re-clarify this, when we're doing our integration, Essentially what we're doing is we're calculating everything below the curve and then we're calculating everything below the curve of the bottom one and subtracting it. And this should naturally make sense. If we only want the area between the curves and this first one when we integrate covers everything here all the way down to the x-axis and then our second one covers everything below the curve to the x-axis. Well, of course, then, if we subtract the two, we're eliminating this bottom green section and we're just getting the area between the two. All right, so now we're going to work through the second example. Essentially, the biggest difference with this example is that we're going to have functions in terms of y rather than x. And that's just going to change what our bounds look like and how the problem is solved. So when we're dealing with functions in terms of y rather than x, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to classify our curves as right and left instead of top and bottom. So similar to the last problem, I'm gonna define uh, basically our top function as our right function, which is here. So the function to the right will be classified as that. And then our function on the left will be basically the equivalent of a bottom function if we were dealing with functions in terms of x. So now that we have that scenario set up, we have both of our curves labeled. So our right function is labeled as this, and then our left function is labeled as this. So then let's set up our bounds here. So if we have an area function, then we're gonna say we integrate from three to zero because we have a point at negative three, three and zero, zero. But because we're doing it in terms of y this time, we're gonna deal with the y bounds. So we have one at three and one at zero. So that's three for b and zero is a. And then we're gonna do x right minus x left. So we're gonna do our blue curve minus our green curve. So blue, which would be this one, and then green, which would be this one. Of course, we're doing terms of dy because we're integrating in terms of y. And then basically, you're just gonna go across and integrate. This integration shouldn't be too hard. You just wanna use the basic rule of add one and then drop the exponent uh, to the denominator. You can do the integration really simply like that. And then once you have your integration, then you're gonna put your end bounds there. You plug in the three for the first section, 
plug in zero for the second section as you subtract it, and then obviously we know if we multiply by zero, it's just gonna cancel out to zero. You should get an easy simplification here. So I guess when we're considering the difference between the two here, um, we can even put them side by side here. So in the first case scenario, when we're dealing with in terms of x, or functions in terms of x, we did a top curve minus a bottom curve. But in the next one, we were in terms of y, so we wanna do in terms of right curve minus left curve, and that will give us the area of integration. And then, like I emphasized before, the last other thing you need to pay attention to is the bounds of integration. If you're integrating in terms of x in this first case, then you wanna have bounds in terms of x. But then if you're integrating in terms of y, you wanna have bounds in terms of y. So in this case we did where our bounds were eight to one, and then we had three to zero in terms of y.